Hey, we are looking this week at what is called the rapture. And that's part of our continuing series, The King is Coming. We're just talking about Jesus coming, which there are two of. There's the rapture, which is a secret. Only believers will see that. And then there is the second coming of Christ or the second advent, which everyone will see. Uh, and that is at the end as the establishment of the millennial reign, a thousand year reign of Christ. And then the handing over of the kingdom to the Father. And then there's the new creation, new heaven and new earth. And so ultimately, um, wickedness is done away with. And as we look at that, we're thinking of the rapture rather than the second coming. And we will get to the second coming eventually um, because that is the king's coming. But uh, and to reign in power and glory. But before that, there is the rapture of the church. Now, there's some people who don't hold that the, the rapture. In fact, my favorite scholar, certainly favorite modern scholar, N.T. Wright, uh, does not hold uh, that the rapture is a reality that is taught in Scripture. However, I believe that it is. And that's coming specifically from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5. And other, other places, there is 1 Corinthians um, and there uh, is also 2 Thessalonians as well. Uh, but we are focusing on 1 Thessalonians chapter 14. And, and if I have time tomorrow, we'll get into uh, 2 Thessalonians and, and, and into that as well. But, but 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is dealing with the rapture itself, being snatched up, caught up with Christ in the air. Um, I don't think that that is, is a reference to the second coming where everybody is caught up in the air and then we come right back down to the earth. That doesn't make sense to me because then you get into Revelation, the marriage feast and all of that that's going on in heaven, the standing before Christ, all of that that takes place. Um, but we got through verse 14 yesterday. Uh, so I'll just pick it up at verse 13 and get us into verse 15. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. You know, And there again... The Bible, when it speaks of hope, biblical hope, it is not the word for us. It is a wish. I wish that would happen. In biblical hope, it is a certainty. This is going to happen, but there is a looking forward, a longing for it to be present now. That's biblical hope. There is this assurance that this is going to take place, but the longing is for it to already be here. That's what hope means in biblical theology uh, or in biblical language. So uh, as those who have no hope, and there are those who have no certainty of any future, no certainty of, of a reality right now of being present with the Lord here or being present with the Lord uh, in, the heaven, in the heavens. Um, but we do have a hope, a certainty, a, an assurance that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. For And here's the reason. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, there again, that's the gospel. That Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world, that he has been resurrected with power by the spirit of holiness, declared the Son of God, that that shows the, that, that sin has been paid for, the result of sin being paid for is that death is defeated. And so there is this new creation that begins in Jesus and all who are in Jesus. And that being resurrected by God through the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, um, that's in Romans. That means that he has been declared righteous. He's been declared innocent for that matter. Paul goes on in Romans to say that everyone, and throughout his other letters for that matter, that those who are in Christ or are Messiah people who have believed in him, uh, faith in God through Jesus Christ, his finished work on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, who believe that and trust that, that the Holy Spirit takes up residence within us, that moment that we yield allegiance to Jesus Christ as Lord and he becomes our Savior, the Spirit of God changes us, seals us for all eternity as belonging to him uh, and so that uh, uh, we are we are changed in that new creation we are found in him so we're declared innocent as well that verdict of the end is brought forward to the now so that we already know what the verdict is 
uh, over us because Jesus has been declared innocent and we are in him, the Messiah, so we are declared innocent as well. So the verdict for him is the verdict for us because we're in him, we're in Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the one who puts us there. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus, those who have died in Christ. So what we got to yesterday, that when Jesus returns for his bride, which John chapter 14, I will come again and to receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. My Father's house are many dwelling places. He goes and builds that place. Now, I think that applies to the individual at his or her death who is a believer, but it also applies collectively to the church uh, in that um, he is coming for us. Now, that's not the second coming. The second coming, the day of the Lord, that's talked about in much different language than this, uh, as, as we'll see in just a second. Um, who, have, who have died in Jesus, who are, who are with him now. The, the, the soul of that person, if you, soul and spirit, if you prefer, will come with him. There's not this sense of a disembodied spiritual ghost-like figure. We talked about that yesterday. Um, that that we have that temporary body. We're going to get that glorified body the day of, of the rapture, the resurrection takes place. And Old Testament saints will come with him. They will get a glorified body at that time as well because we know that Christ emptied out um, Sheol, those who the righteous dead, that was emptied out. And so those Old Testament saints will come with Jesus, as will those who believed in Jesus in the age of grace, the church age, will come with him as well. Well, this we say to you by the word of the Lord, this is from the Lord himself, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who have, who have fallen asleep or who have died. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They, in other words, the question from the Thessalonians was, have, have those who have died missed the coming of the Lord? Have they missed something? And he says, by no means. In fact, they're going to be resurrected before we are if we're alive when Jesus returns, if we're walking this earth when, he, when the rapture takes place. They will be resurrected first. They will get their glorified body first. So in no means have, have they missed anything. In fact, they're first in line. And so it's some confusion. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. That shout, that command, some say, well, it's the shout like outside Lazarus' tomb, Lazarus come forth. There's this shout. And all who belong to Christ will respond to that shout. Those bodies will be reformed, reconstituted is that creative moment if you will, where if you go back to Genesis, God spoke and there was, and it, and it said, let there be light and let there be life and let there be this. And so there's the, the word of God creates and the word of the Lord, who is God as well, creates and it recreates that body and it's reformed and except it's a glorified body and it's perfect in every way. And uh, that soul is going to be reunited with that body. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trumpet of God. Now that goes back to the Feast of Trumpets. Um, the shofar is sounded, and the shofar will sound, and it will gather God's people together. Uh, that's what the shofar sounded, to gather God's people, and we'll be gathered together. Uh, and so they will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And that caught up, that is harpazo, which means to snatch up and carry away, which is the same word that raptor means in Latin, which is where we get our word rapture, means to snatch up, to take up, and carry away. And so it's the same thing. So clearly, this is a different circumstance than the day of the Lord, which is spoken of in different language. And we'll be, uh, but I, I do believe that we will be transformed, as Paul says uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable. This mortal must put on immortality. So we're going to change. We're going to go. No one gets to bypass death. In that moment, we will die physically and we will be changed 
in that moment. Um, and I don't know what that's going to feel like. I don't know what it feels like to die. I really don't. Um, I know that God gives grace, and I know that the Lord is present at the moment of our death, and I know that when we draw that last breath, what about someone that's in a coma? What about someone that's not aware? What about someone who's brain dead, so to speak, brain dead? I don't know what really that means other than the brain is really not, the higher levels aren't functioning. Um, I don't know. I think that person is experiencing, if they are a believer, experiencing the grace of God, that they're aware of God, that they're aware of that, if they are aware at all. I don't think that they're suffering. I don't think they're suffering pain. At least the studies don't reveal that they're suffering pain, that kind of thing. I don't like to to say that they're trapped in a body is, is, is I don't think it is accurate, but I don't think we're released from the body of this death until we draw that last breath, um, however uncomfortable that makes us. But I do think that God supplies grace to the believer in that time, and in some sense and in some way, we're aware of the Lord's presence. Now, having said that, um, thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. We have this assurance, this hope. That is our hope. And remember, that biblical hope is we know that it's going to take place. That's a certainty. We long for it to take place now. We anticipate it with eagerness. We're anticipating with eagerness that transformation, that coming. And we should be living for that. Of course, we're living in that tension right now because we've already begun the new creation. The Spirit has begun it in us, and we are able to cry, I'm a Father, and we are able with the Spirit's empowerment to take those faltering steps forward as new creation, as new human beings. Um, but that's a faltering, stumbling kind of stepping. I don't think anybody runs in that fullness of that that we will have uh, when we're perfected and when, we're, when we have that glorified body, when there is perfection, when there's no longer the taint of sin and death. Uh, even though we're declared innocent, even though we have that, we still have that tension within us. We still have that voice that whispers to us, you're a sinner. Um, how could God love you? That kind of thing. And that'll, that'll disappear. That'll be gone. We will walk with God, worship him, carry out our function as bearing image into his creation, into this whole new universe, the expanse of that. And we were out around at my house, around our fire pit, and Jacob, my son, and I, we were talking, and looked up at the vastness of, of space, because out where I am, we don't have a lot of light pollution, so out there looking up into the Milky Way, and you see all the stars, and how, how limitless it seems. Why so empty? Uh, and my belief is, and my comment to my son was reminding him that God created this universe for us to explore, for us to create, for us to be in, uh, and it's been held back because of sin. And one day it too will be restored as we are. And we're going to see, wow, what it's going to be like and the glory and the radiance of it all. I'm looking forward to that. And so we have that assurance, that hope, and I look forward to that, that we will be snatched up and caught up. Now, what's the difference between that and the day of the Lord? Well, you we have to wait till tomorrow for that. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get to it. Uh, I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Um, and so hopefully I can get that done in the morning uh, and, and, and we can wrap that up. But I want you to see more than anything that this is all tied to the love of God. This is all tied to his rescue operation of his creation, certainly humanity. Um, and it's not that God wants to limit those who are saved. In fact, he opens his arms wide to everyone who will, who will believe, to everyone who will come to Christ, to everyone who will uh, bow before him as Lord, and therefore he becomes their Savior. Uh, that is applied to them in that moment of belief, in that moment of trust. Uh, and, and, and so it's not, it is limited in the sense that you must be born again, but it's not limited in the sense of who can be. I know some people would disagree with me, but I believe that Jesus died for the sins of the world, as First John tells us. Um, not just for our sins who are believers, but for the sins of the world, for everyone. And I think it's applied to us when... Um, when that
conversion takes place when we believe in the Lord. And that's all based on the love of God because he does love us so much that he gave us his only begotten son that we have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and joy indescribable right here and right now. And I pray that that's yours because if it is, then you know the peace of God, the shalom of God, that wholeness, that completeness that comes from being made new. I pray that that is yours. Hey, listen, uh, I pray God's blessings on you always. Till tomorrow, God bless you. See you tomorrow.